in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. Now in Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision. Ananias, yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. <coughs> then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we study your word and prepare for Holy Communion, may the Holy Spirit come upon us and fill us with your grace, for we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. When I look at our scripture lesson this morning, it deals with the conversion of Saul or Peter. You know, testimonies are so very, very important in the church. And so many times when we're in church, it's a really great feeling when you talk to someone and you really find out why they're, how they became a Christian, uh, how they became a Christian, and why are they here. But you know, what happened here was a great misunderstanding in the life of Saul. Can you remember the last major mis misunderstanding you had with someone? Something that was totally confusing? You said one thing, they heard something different, and the result was a mess. It may turn out to be really funny when you look back on it years later, but not in that moment. In that moment, it was very frustrating. It was a major misunderstanding. There was a man named Norm Williams had a misunderstanding at a local library when he requested copies of two books by an author. When he went to the lady to find out where these books were, the librarian asked, well, what's the first book? And the name of the book was, that's not what I meant. He said, well, what do you mean, the librarian asked. Well, that's the title of the book. Well, okay, what's the other book that you want? Asked by the librarian. You just don't understand. And she said, excuse me. It confused the librarian. 
It took a while, but finally, Williams finally got his two books, That's Not What I Meant, and You Just Don't Understand. Well, there was a dangerous misunderstanding in the life of Saul. He was a Pharisee. He was one of the ruling classes. And when he saw this small movement called The Way of about 120 people that had followed Jesus, he was intent upon destroying them, getting rid of them. So he went to the high priest and he asked for letters of recommendation so that when he would go and find these people, he could arrest them and bring them back to Jerusalem for trial. But on the way, Jesus appeared to him and said to him, why do you persecute me? Saul, why do you persecute me? And suddenly he was blind, he couldn't see, and those that were traveling with him took him to a place and he was there for three days and three nights, didn't eat or sleep, he was worried about what had happened. And then God told a man named Ananias to go and to visit him to go and visit him and to touch his eyes and then the scales on his eyes fell off and he realized what he had been doing was wrong and he became baptized. Well, at first Ananias didn't want to go. He said, Lord, you're sending me to a man that's here to persecute the followers of Christ. But he obeyed. He obeyed. You see, so many times in a, in a person's life, they have a change of heart about something. They change their philosophy about politics. They think, change their philosophy about life. And they realize what they were doing in their life had to be changed. I was listening to a commentary last night that the, the press had a a big conference with the president last night in Washington, D.C. And they had a film about this African-American woman who most people don't know, but she was the first African-American invited to the White House to cover news. Well, in her old age, the doctor said to her, you know, you need to stop smoking. It's not good for your health. So her family said, will you please stop smoking? So she says, okay, I'll start smoking a pipe. <laughs> That's what she did. But you know, so many times we have this misunderstanding, and when we look at the life of John Wesley in particular, here he was in 1738, an ordained minister in the Church of England. Even though he was ordained, he didn't feel the presence of God in his life. And so as he was walking down the street one night near Aldersgate, the day before, he said, but I am still dead and cold, having peace and deep, but no joy or love in the Holy Ghost. I don't feel the presence that other people have. And then he found the difference. When he went into this church, he heard a sermon on Romans, and his heart was strangely warmed. He said, the moment I awakened, Jesus' master was in my heart and in my mouth, and I found all my strength lay in keeping my eyes fixed upon him and my soul waiting on him continually. He saw a mighty change within his life. One of the first questions we should ask ourselves from today's scripture lesson would be this. What kind of God do you believe in? What type of God do you believe in? His primary motivation for hunting down and arresting followers of Jesus was his desire to serve God, but it was scary, and he changed his mind. A mission that is divorced from the heart of Jesus may have noble intentions and tragic results. Such a mission will drive people further from God rather than draw people to God. Saul, who became Paul, his faith wasn't in God. It was in a misunderstanding of the kind of God that he was worshiping. He served the law, not the Lord, and we Christians can be just short-sighted and destructive if we don't align our lives with the heart of Jesus. In the Simpsons cartoon, Homer and Marge Simpson have a next-door neighbor, the ultra-religious Flanders family. 
And in one episode, Homer asked Flounders where they had been. That, an that answers, we went to a Christian camp. We were learning how to be more judgmental. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can see that's a cartoon, but isn't that true? In so many churches today and in so many ways that we have, we become more judgmental instead of more loving. And it's important for us that we feel the love of Christ within our hearts. As we come and worship today, we should ask the question, Lord, what do you want me to do? How can I live my life to be closer to you? And the final question we should ask from scripture lesson today is, Lord, what is it that you want me to do? There's a true story of a man who was homeless and went into a Christian church. He was dressed in really poor clothing. And after the service, the pastor went up and he said, can I help you? And he said, well, yes. And well, the pastor reached into his wallet and pulled out money and he's handing it to him. He said, I don't want your money. I want that Jesus that you talked about in the sermon. I want that Jesus. I, I, I don't need your money because I know how to live on the streets. I know how to get a meal. But that Jesus that you talked about in the sermon, I want in my life. And so he came back to the church week after week. And the church found him a home, found him a job. He became an associate in that church and later became a part-time minister and is serving the Lord today. As we come and worship today and as we partake of Holy Communion, I want to close with these words. Christian perfection therefore does not imply as some people do an exemption either from ignorance or mistake or infirmities or temptation. Indeed, it is only another term for holiness. Live our lives in perfection to our Father in heaven. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we prepare for Holy Communion, may our hearts be open. May we look at our lives and really ask the important question as we partake of the bread and the cup, Lord, what is it that you want me to do? How can I better serve you and those around me? As we lift up our hearts now, in Christ's name, amen. At this time, we'll prepare for Holy Communion. I hope everyone has a little cup and bread and all have that. If you just want to take a second and pull back that little top uh, of the plastic, it would be a lot easier for you. So I guess everyone has that. So let us turn to our insert. The Lord be with you, and, and also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Blessed are you, God of creation and all beginnings, of God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of <clears throat> Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of apostles and martyrs, God of our mothers and fathers, and God of our children to all generations. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, 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 God, God of power, power and might, heaven and earth, earth are full of your, your glory. Hosanna in the highest. highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. 
By the baptism of the suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by order and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Keep, take heed, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice and union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ, Christ will come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints and especially in those whom we name before you in our hearts. Since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance. The rays that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, by your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes for his final victory and his feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And now let us pray as Jesus taught his disciples to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Take and eat the bread in remembrance of our Lord. Take and drink in remembrance of our Lord. You have given yourself to us, Lord. Now we give ourselves to others. Your love has made us a new people. As a people of love, we will serve you with joy. Your glory has filled our hearts. Help us to glorify you in all things. In all things. Amen. And now at this time, uh, Brendan will play music, and if you would like to be anointed with oil, if you would please raise your hand.
want to thank Brendan for that beautiful music. People have requested uh, more music with our piano, so we want to thank Brendan for, for doing that. Our next hymn is Amazing Grace and the Benediction of the Call Response. 378, let us stand. church family. We are so grateful for this blessing. And now we may we go in peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.